there. Good. So, uh, in your last visit to, well, your visit to Cuba in January, yeah. you were to, uh, you were received by Inca. Yes, we were. Uh, so it was a wonderful visit. Yeah, Here. we had a very good press conference there at ECAP, and a lot of the media showed up. And even uh, even the U.S. media showed up. I think the Wall Street Journal was there, the press. Oh, they were there. But they were there, but they didn't cover it. So, uh, <laughs> it was, but uh, we were on the top of the news in Cuba. So, uh, Not here. <laughs> and then when we went to Pinar del Rio, they'd seen us on the news, so they rolled out the red carpet, you know. Good. We had a, we had a really wonderful visit in Cuba. We met a, made a lot of new friends. So you could see the impact of the U.S. Yes, yes, right yes, indeed. It's, it's very disturbing. Very disturbing. It's more important than ever that uh, that, that unfair blockade be ended. Especially in the time of mm. COVID. Provide to the patients uh, that they will be trying to contact the American companies that they didn't receive the permission to export oxygen, sell off the oxygen. Then we should, fortunately, we found. Uh, friendly countries uh, that uh, provide us uh, the oxygen. We did it until we could repair our oxygen plant. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very difficult situation because we had to bring the oxygen from China, from Russia, from other countries, having the U.S. 90 miles away. Oh, yeah, you could have But they didn't, didn't give the approval to, to buy the oxygen. And, uh, so that's the uh, so, cruelty of the, yeah. the blockade. It's very symbolic too. They don't want to let Cuba freeze. Uh, and so uh, it's a shame, and it must be reversed. There was some small progress under Obama. Mm -hmm. Started to loosen things up, and then Trump put it right back on, made it even stronger. Mm -hmm. Now Biden has done very little. Mm -hmm. At least it was easy. I was surprised, however, it was fairly easy for us to get permission to travel. Cuba on our boat, so we didn't have too much trouble. Uh, and when we came back, I expected uh, they would be asking us lots of questions. They, they didn't. They didn't. So, so. Might be able to hold on to this, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's important we keep on e educating people because most most Americans don't even know about the blockade, right? And when they hear about it, they instantly understand how unfair that is. How ridiculous it is after 60, 60 plus years. And there are so many examples. Um, right. The one with the medical, medical, medical oxygen, but we have the long time players as well during COVID 19. Uh -huh. And we had a number of issues, problems getting long ventilators. Right. And we ended up producing our own long ventilator. Yeah. Because yeah. we had to. And calling uh, Cuba a state sponsor of terror is ridiculous, unfounded. Yeah. Health care yeah. to countries that uh, need this, uh, this services uh, in Cuba. We are not uh, giving what's left, we are sharing what we have. That's just uh, right. you, I think Cuba, our philosophy. Cuba sends more doctors and medical workers around the world than in the World Health Organization. So, uh, that's very exemplary. During, during the pandemic, for instance, uh, we sent 58 uh, medical brigades uh, to fight COVID to help this nation to, to, fight, to fight the COVID to 42 countries. 58 brigades. Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, we've done, I think, five different uh, vaccines. Yes, three of them in the category of vaccine approved by the regulated authorities and even export to some countries. And also we today some countries in the Caribbean, Asia and Africa we donate also our vaccines. Very effective. We have a, a, the whole human population got immunization uh, with the three doses. More than 95% it's uh, already the older boosters. So it really was a great effort and the state of course must uh, invest in the development of this vaccine. And in this precise uh, moment that we were uh, 
receiving the strong impact of the pandemic. So the blockade got worse because during the Trump administration, they took uh, 243 new regulations and measures to strengthen the blockade. Yeah. And Biden has left them there, mostly. Yeah? Well, we, we live in a kind of inertia. So inertia. So they, they, this administration, they haven't put any new regulation to strengthen the blockade, but they haven't done anything. Uh, uh, so to loosen it either. To, to lift the blockade yeah. or, or to uh, are, release the. Are there any hopeful signs? Uh, some kind of with the Biden administration that will provide any hope for change? Not much, huh? That's the uh, thing. We have uh, regular exchanges of uh, migration topics on different, but at technical level. Mm -hmm. But there is no, until now, there is no sign yeah. of the policy change. Here you have support in the United Nations, because every year the United Nations votes overwhelmingly, oh, yes. calling for an end to the blockade. This year, only two votes. Last year. This last year. Only it was in November last year, votes. 185 countries voted in favor of the draft resolution presented by Cuba on the necessity to leave right. the economic, financial, and commercial blockade imposed by the United States. 185 countries voted in favor. And two only against. two against. voted against. The U.S. and Israel, I believe. And you, in the past years, usually they find some other miscellaneous little country in front of to join. This year they couldn't even find that. So, so the world overwhelmingly opposes the blockade, but the U.S. just continues. Unfortunately. So, uh, we, we need sooner, sooner or later, we have to be lifted. Because I know at this position of the whole international community demanded the, the lifting of the blockade. You know, the General Assembly has not. Uh, like the Security Council, the decisions are recommendations. They, they are not, they have not the, the power to apply right. yeah. the, the enforcement of the decisions. But it's also it's a, a moral call to the U.S. authorities to understand that the whole international community is opposing this uh, uh, humane, uh, illegal blockade. So I think it's very important. Because it brings to this issue to the center of the, of the discussions in the international community and in the United Nations. And one day, one American president will understand that uh, there, is, there is no reason to continue with this hostility. Obama, he tried in the, in the last uh, mandate, the second part of the mandate, Work with the Congress in order to lift the blockade, but it was uh, it wasn't successful in this in the trial. But at least he has a merit that under the Obama administration we established the diplomatic relations, we reopened our embassies in Havana and Washington. Then it began a movement. We signed agreements in 20 of cooperation in 22 different areas, like. Uh, environment, like uh, migration topics, like climate, like uh, drug traffic uh, in uh, combat, different areas, features for the U.S. and for Cuba. And then, uh, but then the blockade, you know, there is a, it's not an executive decision, it's a law. Legislation of the U.S. Congress. Yes. There's a whole lot of pieces to it. You can't just uh, change yeah. policy towards Cuba. Well, it's very difficult in a presidential election, as you know, because Florida has been a swing state, <coughs> and the politics of Florida have been uh, influenced strongly by right-wing uh, 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 Cubans who fled the revolution and opposed the revolution. All the contenders want to say we're going to get you the tough one. But I think the, the attitude is changing among the next generation of Cuban Americans in Florida. Even they want to be able to visit Cuba. They want to be able to send their families. They don't.
don't support the blockade so much as the old, old guard. Uh, uh, so maybe that uh, that can change. Plus, uh, Florida is maybe no longer a swing state. It's, 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 it's turned into the, the it's a red state. It's a red state. Uh, so maybe it'll become less of an issue. But I know that the uh, some of those same right wing uh, Congress people in Congress are making it more and more difficult for the president or anybody else to to end the blockade. How long have you been involved with the initiative with the border rule this uh, Sailing this boat, uh, we actually found this boat uh, in 2010. Of course, originally it was sailed in 1958. Even just before the Cuban Revolution, uh, it was sailed by oh, wow. by four yeah. Quaker peace activists from Los Angeles to uh, Honolulu on the way to the Marshall Islands with the intention of interfering with U.S. military testing. Mm -hmm. They were stopped in Hawaii and thrown in jail, uh, but they got a lot of international publicity. Well, this boat then was sold and went into private hands. In 2010, it was discovered in... Uh, a sunken, derelict boat with a big hole in the side in, uh, in Humboldt Bay, way in northern, up in Northern California. And uh, the veterans for peace group up there, when they learned about the history of the boat, they decided we're going to rebuild the boat, restore it, and to continue the mission of sailing for the nuclear free world. It took them five years of volunteer labor to put the boat back together, and we've been sailing it for the last uh, eight years, up and down the West Coast primarily, British Columbia, Washington State, Oregon, California, Baja, Mexico. Then we sailed it over to Hawaii and back. We wanted to go again to the Marshall Islands and Guam and Okinawa and Japan. And then COVID hit and all those places shut down. So we brought it back to the U.S. Uh, that's a you know month long difficult sail across the Pacific Ocean in this little boat. Um, but then we decided to sail all throughout the eastern United States. So uh, uh, in September we put the boat on a truck from San Francisco Bay to Minneapolis and uh, we sailed down the Mississippi. Captain Steve was very much involved with that. Um, and we sailed into the uh, Ohio River, the Tennessee River, the Tom Bigby River, down to the Gulf of Mexico. And that's when we decided, hey, we're going to be in Key West at the end of uh, December, so uh, why not go to Cuba? So we made all the necessary arrangements and we had a really wonderful, wonderful special voyage to Cuba. Cuban people are, are in our hearts and now we carry it, that as an additional message in the words of the end of the blockade, which almost brought uh, a nuclear war to this world, and this continues to be incredibly unfair, unjust, really illegal, and needs to end. The young people in these generations, they have heard about the nuclear threat, but they have never lived the war. Right. And they, they don't know from what is to be close to a nuclear war or to a conventional war. So it is, most of them, they have learned about the war playing. Right. with these games, right. yeah. so they see the world like a, some kind of a game. Right. It is important for them to understand the, how severe could be a war, a nuclear war, and for that this education of initiative yeah. are very important, yeah. very, I would say, decisive. And a lot of young people actually have been traveling to Cuba too to learn more about what's really going on in Cuba. <clears throat> we met some people yesterday, some young people over at the People's Forum where we had an event you know, who had just returned from Cuba. I think maybe a yes. hundred or more. Yes, 152. 152. That's right. Yeah, and they we had met a fantastic them. experience. Uh, so it was exciting to see these young people who were uh, very much in solidarity with the Cuban Revolution and, and doing their part of educating people about the uh, importance of ending the blockade. So. We're making some progress. We have a lot, a lot more to do, a lot more educational work to do. It's probably the most important thing is to make people in this country more aware of the impact of U.S. foreign policy in Cuba and around the world. And if I may, the, the young people are saying we're trying to brainstorm with each other and how best, what can we, how can we best help this situation? They're asking us and we're asking them. So. Uh, 
we said we just have to work together and figure this out together. Exactly. So we can love to be in touch with you as this Golden Rule sales. Anything that you suggest that we can improve the message, anything you need from the American people or in our education process is greatly appreciated. Uh, even statements from you. I'm sorry, it's okay that we filmed this little thing. Yes, it's okay. Great. But, and it's, yeah. Next time we have to sail across the Hudson. Well, oh, there you go. yes. <laughs> That'd be great. I don't know well, if you'll be coming the back. coming back. Uh, it'll be back in what? Month? July, July, 4th, July 4th. 4th. Yeah. I don't know how it's really going to stop for much. I think it's going to head into the Hudson. And Just do a turn and set up. Well, one yeah. day it's here, yeah. But, one day. Uh, yeah, maybe we could, uh, we'll look at arranging something. That would be a pleasure. Yes. <clears throat> Really? Great. You like to sail? Yes. You don't get seasick. <laughs> You're doing good right here. <laughs> yeah. You can be on board now. He's okay. Right. We had a wonderful visit. Cuba is not allowing the freedom of religion. And we found that to be totally untrue. We visited the Christians, Catholic churches. We visited the... We saw the synagogue, we went to a Buddhist, uh, uh, you know, there's people are practicing all kinds of religions you know, without any depression whatsoever. So that's just one more lie. Uh, I found it, I found it uh, you know, listing of Cuba uh, on that issue as well. There's no ground whatsoever to put Cuba or to classify Cuba as a country where a religious freedom is not practiced or is not observed. That's right. We do have religious freedom. Yes. So, you know,